I'm Emily Rooney. Welcome to Beat the Press. Our topics, accusations of sexism in the coverage of Boston's mayoral race. Are you an online commenter? One science magazine is pulling the plug on you. Newsweek gets a new owner and a new dress code for staffers, like no hair color. That and our panel rants and raves of the week. Joining me are Dan Kennedy of Northeastern University. WGBH's Kelly Crossley. Farrah Stockman of the Boston Globe and author and journalist Roy Harris. First, despite the fact that Boston doesn't resemble the Boston of 20 years ago, the results of Tuesday's preliminary mayoral election produced two white men. And according to some disgruntled voters, that's because the media was unduly harsh on the only female in the race, Charlotte Golar Ritchie. Status quo, lackluster, no clear message. Those are just a few of the terms used to describe the campaign of one-time Boston City housing chief Charlotte Golar Ritchie, who also happened to be the only woman in the race. In all, a dozen candidates are running, 11 men and one woman. True, there was a lot of focus on race and gender largely because of the potential to make history. Uh, you've got the opportunity for the city to elect its first female candidate, its first African-American mayor. And in fact but some Gular Ritchie supporters say that focus was sexist. In an email to WGBH's Philip Martin, communications executive Colette Phillips said Gular Ritchie and her campaign were scrutinized by the media in a way that her male counterparts were not, and that she was held to a higher standard a clear gender bias. Colette Phillips singled out this opinion piece by the Boston Globe's Larry Harmon, who wrote that Golar Ritchie's campaign was dysfunctional and that she had a poor all-around performance. Polls show her with strength that has surprised some. Meanwhile, the case could be made that Charlotte Golar Ritchie got more favorable attention than the others. She was the subject of several Marjorie Egan columns in the Herald and made that paper's front page at least once leading us to wonder if those crying foul just don't like the outcome. Well, a few things. Colette Phillips is absolutely right. Uh, Charlotte Gola Ritchie was held to a different standard because she's a woman, and that is always the case. That's, I, I mean, I don't think in our lifetime that is going to go away. Now, was she scrutinized and criticized in a way that her male counterparts weren't? Probably some of that is true, too, because you're always focusing on the way a woman looks as, as opposed to the way guys look. The only piece that I thought went over the line, and I said this on the day it ran, was Larry Harmon's piece, which ran on a Thursday. The election was a Tuesday. He had been sitting in on the editorial meeting at the Globe. They had, they, what do they call those things? Labs. The lab, when she came in and gave her presentation. And he wrote the most scathing. He said the only time he ever saw anybody look more comfortable was somebody who was in a neck brace and couldn't sit down. And, and that was the way he started the column, and he went from there. It was, I thought it was unduly harsh and ill-timed and borderline prejudicial. That Larry Harmon column was very tough. Now, I have I did not cover the mayor's race directly. I've certainly talked to reporters who've covered the race. Uh, my knowledge of Charlotte Golar Ritchie goes back to the beginning of her career about 20 years ago. Uh, and she was very impressive when she started out, and I think people expected really great things from her. And then she kind of disappeared into administrative roles. Now, I say disappeared, I'm sure she was doing important work in those roles, but she really seemed to have taken herself out of play. And then she surfaces 20 years later, and I think those of us who've been around for a while were kind of expecting great things of her. And apparently she did not run a particularly good campaign. As I said, I have talked to reporters who've covered the campaign. None of them thought she ran a good campaign. And I think that to the extent that there was some harsh scrutiny of her, I think it may stem from the fact that people have been expecting big things from her mm. for a long time and they were disappointed in her campaign. I have to agree with that. I think people, including Larry Harmon, had really high expectations of her when she came out. She's clearly bright. She's clearly um, cares about the city and has and, and qualified. But her campaign did not reflect that. And she had a lot. Her she had fewer specifics of any candidate in in the top tier or the second tier. You asked her her uh, solution to any problem, and it was always the same. I'm going to get a group of smart people in a room, and they'll figure it out. She kept, and she wouldn't tell you the people, she wouldn't tell you the room. And 
You know, <laughs> were, you in that, were you in that lab meeting? Oh, Michelle? I was in the editorial board yeah. meeting. I was in the lab debates mm -hmm. that she did. I mean, she did not. She was very careful, very, very cautious, like over the top cautious. You asked her any question about what she was going to do, and she would always reserve judgment. Every other candidate out there came with really specific proposals, mm -hmm. and if you, they disagreed with you, they would say why. And I mean, and look at Adrian Walker's column. His first column about her was very complimentary. The second column, he called her out for flipping on school committee, whether she supported an elected or an appointed. He called her out for that. It had nothing to do with gender. It had nothing to do with fallopian tubes. It had nothing to do with her being a woman. And she took it so personally that, to me, that told me she is not ready for prime time because this is politics. And politics is, you know, you're going to get called out for that. That was a totally... Um, uh, that was a, mm. I, I, I just, the way that she reacted to her, her criticism showed me that she had been out of the game for a long time and that she's too thin-skinned for this game. Well, columns aside, I, I think if we look at the basic <laughs> news coverage, one thing we have to remember is that this was a really difficult race to cover. Right. And we've been talking about that, you know, for months going back there, how the Globe, just to take the Globe as an example, GBH is another example, going at... Uh, individual candidates trying to be fair to all of them to give them as much time as they deserved and only singling out people when something dramatic came out of the campaign. Um, what, a, what a columnist says seems to me to be kind of beside the point in a way. It's the basic coverage you want to look at. The columnists are going to say what they're going to say w whenever it is. And, you know, is a columnist going to be prejudicial? Uh-huh. I think that's sort of in a way what they're supposed to do is speak out. And, and and let people know what's going on behind the scenes. I think what the, I agree with uh, Emily about the Larry Harmon column because of the timing. Mm. If the column had run yeah. several, you know, a week or so, I mean, I think it just flattened mm -hmm. their campaign. They were like, what? You know, that is just so harsh. I, that's his opinion. As Roy has said, he can say that. So I think the timing of it is what made it seem extra harsh and perhaps made it look as though she was being singled out for something that nobody else got. On the other hand, yeah, you were going to say something? Oh, I will say that Larry <laughs> also called out Dan Connolly for, for having an argument with a voter, you oh, yeah. know. That was, oh, no, yes, I saw earlier. that. Yeah. Yes, I saw that one, too. And that was a little crispy as well. So that's Larry Harmon, now we know, yeah. you know, and now he, how he says his thing. I mean... What I have heard from all the people that I have been around during the campaign who covered the campaign is that her campaign was not represented well by some people that were fronting for her. And this annoyed reporters to no end. And so it is really hard then to get past, if you want to get to the kind of open features that a Larry Harmon or others would write, to get past the basic coverage in which people may be shaped by that, then you have to have you know, something that suggests behind you a strong organization that can do that. Mm. Here's the other thing that I think is really important that someone else said, I wish I thought of it. It's one thing to be as smart and as capable and as have the credentials that she had, and it's another thing to be able to articulate the knowledge in the moment, in that way, in those forums. There's a certain kind of ability to navigate in those forums in that way. I, I moderated a forum she, that she was on, and she was very good. Mm -hmm, it too. focused on some housing issues. It focused on some development issues. She was good. That's her strength. It just didn't come out in other All ways right. for other people.